Yeah, thank you. And my name is Aysa Jan Abedin, and uh, I'm from uh, Kaylev and Kosik. And this is a uh, work that was uh, done previously at the company Authentico Technologies. It's a startup based in Gothenburg. And what I'm going to talk about is a uh, is a way of hashing passwords using uh, or making password hashing hardware dependent, so as to uh, mitigate offline password cracking. And I think I'm going to disappoint uh, Per because I didn't include any math <laughs> in the slides. So uh, I hope it won't be disappointing. So uh, <clears throat> as you all know, passwords is one of the uh, three main authentication factors, which is uh, who you know factor or the knowledge factor. And the main stream of password hashing is basically uh, salted hash, and where the hashing uh, is either one of the CPU incentive, uh, intensive uh, hash functions like uh, bcrypt or P <coughs> pbkdf2 or some memory hard functions like argon2 or scrypt. And these data breaches, uh, you, you, you've, you've probably read this uh, over the years and if we visit this site, we can uh, see uh, there has been uh, countless uh, data breaches where uh, the big players like uh, Yahoo uh, are involved and some uh, uh, big hotel chains where millions of users' uh, data is stolen and along with it, their passwords were also uh, uh, been cracked. And this doesn't only apply to service industries but also uh, government uh, Agencies were also breached, and this is an example of the Office of Personnel uh, Management uh, in the U.S. where 21 million people's data was stolen, and uh, together with them, their passwords also, and how we know whether our passwords are safe, and this has been, uh, this Have I Been Pond appeared in one of the slides, I forgot which one, earlier, and we can check on this website whether our passwords were also in uh, the dark web for sale, and these are due to all the uh, breaches, and in one way or another, depending on how the passwords were hashed, and they were uh, uh, cracked, and they are available uh, for sale, along with uh, other uh, information related to us. And what is, the, what is the problem that all leads to these uh, big data breaches? And as you all know, this uh, saying that the, the strength of a chain is as... Uh, or a chain is as strong as its weakest link, and this also applies to security. The security of a system is, uh, or a system is as secure as its weakest link. And most of the time, the weakest link could be the passwords or the people uh, who uses the passwords or system admins passwords through which uh, hackers get into uh, systems and steal millions of uh, passwords. And so if we uh, look at the password hashing mechanism, uh, which is basically salted hash, and the problem with for only uh, hashing approaches is uh, they are strong enough for only strong passwords. But weak passwords are easily uh, crackable, and weak to medium strength passwords are uh, are they, they don't take uh, any time uh, for a hacker to uh, apply one of the offline password correcting methodologies to break. And in a, in a research paper from last year on IEEE security and privacy, the uh, top tier security conference uh, on the economics of offline password cracking, and uh, uh, to quote a part in the, in the paper, uh, what they uh, state is uh, to sufficient levels of protection with bcrypt or PK, uh, pbkdf2, it would be necessary to run these algorithms for uh, up to a minute, for well over a second, uh, on modern CPU, which would constitute an unacceptable authentication delay in many uh, contexts. So this, uh, this means that the, the CPU, incentive, uh, CPU intensive hashing functions like these two aren't really uh, suitable for uh, 
used in many contexts if we want to really uh, protect passwords. But what about memory hard func uh, functions? Uh, they do provide uh, good enough protection, but the problem uh, still is that they only minimize the fraction of passwords that can be cracked using offline password cracking. And still, uh, offline password cracking poses uh, a significant security threat. So how can we do uh, better? So what if we use uh, a hardware and make the password hashing hardware dependent? So uh, a basic idea would be to, uh, instead of uh, using uh, these hash functions that uh, I mentioned, what if we use a hardware basically to do what uh, a hashing algorithm would do and hash it uh, with the hardware itself and store the output. And the verification password verification process would still be the same as uh, the usual uh, password hashing. Uh, so what if the password database is stolen? Without the direct uh, access to the hardware, password cracking would, be, uh, uh, would not be possible. And uh, we'll take a look at one uh, approach using what's known as uh, uh, physically unclonable functions, which allows us to use uh, or derive a secret key, which we don't need to store anywhere, and, uh, but we can use that key to uh, process the passwords while using the hardware to hash a password, but only during that hashing uh, operation. And so what is a uh, physically unclonable function? Uh, physically unclonable function is, uh, is a hardware that functions like uh, our biometrics, for instance, fingerprint or iris. And if, uh, if we measure or if we uh, probe a, a certain uh, integrated circuit with the same uh, challenge, we always get similar uh, result or response. Just like when we measure our fingerprint or iris, if we provide the same input, the output will always be similar. Not the same, always be the same, uh, similar. But if we measure or do uh, the same probing on two identically manufactured integrated circuit to hardware object, then the response that we get will be uh, vastly different. Just like comparing two different users' biometrics. So this is the key idea uh, behind this physically unclonable function, which uh, uh, provides us to uh, make use of hardware fingerprints that are inherent in the hardware itself and to use it for uh, cryptographic purposes, like in uh, unique identification of devices or key derivation. And the key derivation, uh, we'll take a quick look. And this is an example with the uh, static RAM uh, puff. And if we measure a, a specific area of a static RAM after each power up, the, the state will always be similar if it is the same area of, a, of an SRAM. But the state would be completely different if it is two different SRAM. And this is... Uh, so what this uh, allows us is to use what's known as a fuzzy extractor to extract a secret key, which then we can use in cryptographic processes. So a, a, a fuzzy extractor basically has two main algorithms. Uh, the first one is key generation, uh, where we take the raw output from the uh, fuzzy source, which in our case is the puff source. The puff output would be used as key generation algorithm to generate a secret key. And along with it, there is a public helper data which is also generated, which can be stored in the public. And that doesn't leak any information about either the raw source or the derived key. And in the uh, in process, which is the second part of a fuzzy extractor, we can take uh, in a raw output from the same source and use the helper data to reconstruct the secret key that was uh, generated in the first process. So this was actually the part where math could uh, uh, 
be used to present, but I instead just abstracted away the key algorithms in the key generation, key reconstruction, where uh, most of the uh, constructions, uh, it's error correction code which is, uh, which is used for key generation and key reconstruction. So now you already got the basic idea how we can use Puff for uh, a hardware-dependent hashing. So what uh, actually takes place is uh, from an SRAM in a hardware, a secret key is derived, and that key is used in a crypto module. And that crypto module would uh, be, in the, uh, in the case of password hashing, would be a module which implements HMAC and uses the secret key. Each time there's, a, there's an input, which is a password to, uh, to process. And out comes the tag. I replaced the output as tag because HMAC is a message authentication code, and the uh, message authentication code output for a message is a tag. Uh, well, we can call it t uh, tag also. But one uh, advantage of this approach is that along with its use for password verification, we can also use it to derive user-specific keys so as to protect each user's data on, uh, on a system with the user-specific key, which is derived from the user password and this unclonable puff key. So the process would be uh, to now give the password, the user password, as an input to a key derivation function together with the uh, unclonable key and to get a, uh, a user-specific key, which can then be used for a specific user's uh, protection of the specific user's uh, data. Uh, so has this been done in practice uh, in any, uh, in any uh, products? And one uh, product I know of, and I think it's the only one uh, that uses this uh, exact uh, procedure that I described, is, uh, is, a, is a hardware product called Cypra by Authentico Technologies, which uses this uh, basic principle to make password hashing hardware dependent. So with the uh, intention of uh, mitigating offline password cracking. So basically, uh, if a database is breached, and there's no key to steal when the database, uh, when the system is breached, because the root key, the puff key, is never stored in any uh, any storage anywhere. It's only uh, accessible when you process a password when you power up the uh, memory area, the SRAM. So, yeah, a little information on the uh, uh, on the. The Cypher product itself, the uh, performance is uh, quite reasonable, which is uh, 25,000 user password hashing per second, which can meet uh, a lot of high network traffic uh, and, uh, demands at, at peak periods, and the performance of the uh, device could also be uh, uh, improved because it's uh, customizable. So with that, I summarize my, my talk, and the key takeaways are we can mitigate offline password cracking. And one approach is to make the password hashing hardware dependent. And I have shown an approach using uh, physically unclonable functions. The idea is to use physically unclonable functions to derive a secret key and use that in connection with uh, HMAC to process user passwords. Yeah, that's it, and uh, I welcome any questions.